Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with random reviews from the overflow room. If I could do this. Yeah, there we go. All right. Now, what have we got? This, t this batch of three. Some really interesting stuff. I have, well, we always have interesting stuff, don't we? I mean, it's music. It's all so interesting. What have I got in there? Oh, wow. Yes, we have some major names coming up. But for the moment, we have to deal with some less major names, but nonetheless interesting. First, Padre Antonio Soler, the Complete Naxos Edition. Um, I believe there are eight volumes in the Complete Naxos Edition, but I have numbers one through eight here anyway, featuring Gilbert Rowland at the harpsichord. He's an excellent player. This is a very, very fine series. It really is. And the, the, the Soler Sonatas, are really kind of fascinating. Um, he's a sort of Scarlatti, well, H.C. Robbins Land and would call him a Siguachi or something like that, a follower. Um, he's not as interesting as Scarlatti, but sometimes he comes close and he, he, he bridges the gap between the Baroque and the early classical era, the Galant era. And so he writes sonatas that are like Scarlatti's in single movements, such as number one here, number 85 at F sharp minor, um, and then others that are multi-movement large-scale works like number 91, which is opus four, number one from 1779. This is in four big movements. I mean, it lasts 13, let's see, 16, 20, 20 some odd minutes. Uh, so they're, you know, they're, they're really quite a range of things. Of course, he wrote that fabulous Fandango. Look at this, Sonata number 98, it's 23 minutes long. Um, this goes up to, let's see, Sonata 115. There's, there's not as many, thank God, as Scarlatti, but there, there are 150, which is certainly enough. I don't think, I, I, this must be more than eight volumes because I don't think we've got 150 Sonatas here. No way, but number 97, especially the multi-movement ones. But yeah, um, it's good stuff. It's a good addition. Uh, I don't know where the rest of it is. I have a bunch of complete Solaire boxes. So I'm not sure if I pursued this one all the way to its logical ending. Um, probably at some point I should. And, you know, I guess I will. I'll have to do it, won't I? I will. But in any case, these were the singles. And so because I had boxes upstairs and was trying to, like, save space, I stuck them down here. But if you want to get some of these with Gilbert Rowland on Naxos, they are first class. They really are. Every single one of them that I heard, I have enjoyed very, very much. So let's stick that, oh goodness, in the shelf. There we go. And that's Solaire. Next, uh, Norwegian composer, uh, Ragnar Söderlund. 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 Yes, this is a contemporary. This is on Aurora Contemporary. I don't know if that label still exists. Söderlund was born in 1945. I don't know if he's still around. Um, and he's a brilliant, wonderful composer. I love his music. It's colorful. It's amazingly well scored. Um, I, I've enjoyed everything I've ever heard by him. And I met him. I met him in Norway. And he, he was just a delightful guy. And I told him, I said, you know, I've heard your second and third symphonies. I think they're marvelous. You really are a gifted orchestrator. And he was like so shocked that somebody actually listened to his stuff and had heard it. He was, it was such a humbling experience, and I haven't heard much of anything else by him since, but he's definitely worth hearing. This is with the London Symphony Orchestra, um, and it's conducted by the composer himself, and you get, let's see, a symphony number two, the Symphonia Breve, which is brief, and his third symphony, Les Illuminations Symphoniques, for soprano, baritone, and orchestra, and a tone poem called Rocambore, Poema Sinfonico, and a piece called Don't Place Your Life in My Hand. Uh, and it's a very enjoyable record. It was produced by Arne Peter Rognan, who was responsible for so much, you know, Norwegian contemporary music. Uh, he had his own label, by the way, Victoria. He did a complete Grieg chamber and piano music edition um, at a big music festival where I met my, my bestie, Dr. Søren Meyer Eller in, in London. I hope, I hope he's okay. I haven't heard from him in a hundred years. But anyway, he produced this for Aurora. And uh, Soderlund, if you see this, and if you see his orchestral works, his orchestral music, give it a listen. I, you're really going to enjoy it. Trust me on that one. It's a name you don't come by very easily. Oh, okay. And then we've got Leo Smith. 
Good old Leo Smith from 1900 to 1943, a fine composer, a sort of experimental composer, but you know, I think in places he was. But anyway, the music here is just delightful, zippy, charming, fun to listen to chamber music. His sextet for Piano and Winds from 1928, which I think is before the Poulenc, isn't it? And his quintet for flute, violin, viola, cello, and harp, which is lovely. And the duo for oboe and cello, and the trio for clarinet, viola, and piano with Ensemble Villa Musica. These are wonderful productions on MDG. Everything Ensemble Villa Musica did is just about terrific. You have their Villa Lobos disc. Ooh, it's great. And uh, so Leo Smith is a guy who didn't live very long. And uh, let's see what happened to him. I'm just curious because I don't remember what happened to him, to be honest with you. Uh, let's see, Leo Smith. In contrast to Victor Ullman, Leo Smith has hardly been researched, yeah, outside the Netherlands. It is Dutch. Um, and he was persecuted and murdered by the Nazis. Um, so he was, was not given much attention. Did I say he was American? I don't know. He's Dutch. He's absolutely Dutch. He was one of the most gifted Dutch composers of the first half of the 20th century. 20th century. And, uh, and let's see, he, was, he did like jazz and other things and... and he here he prefers a filigree technique, the distribution of motives among individual changing instruments, as well as duos of tonal beauty. Yes, they are. I, I remember this recording quite well, I must say. But, uh, wow, well, I haven't heard much. You know, there's some composers. Let me just interrupt myself, my thought. There's some composers you really would love to have the opportunity to explore in greater detail. You know, and Smith was one of those. I remember listening to this and putting this away and saying, Okay, I've got to like find more of his stuff and, and, and do something with it, but I never got a chance. Um, and so it just sits here in the overflow room, which is a good thing because now that I'm going through, I have a reminder of some of the things that I can look at and go through and uh, maybe pick up if I ever have time. Um, there isn't enough time. There isn't enough time in the universe. Maybe one of you um, out there knows more about Leo Smith than I do because I really would like to know more. I would like to hear more. Um, at some point in my life, if I get to it. In the meantime, I have this to spur me on um, when I finally get around to it. And that's all I can say about it. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.